My name is Chris Unruh, and this machine behind me is the 1997 Wolf that we started Precision Land Solutions with in 2007. It's pretty special to me, and it's about to leave, so I want to do a little bit of a walk around and just go through some of the memories that I've got with this machine. So this machine was sitting in a field about uh, four or five miles south of where we are right now, and we heard that this business was available. So myself and my wife went out to have a look at it, and it was pretty daunting to imagine uh, running this machine and using it to get our business going. But we did, and uh, today here we are, we've got four other uh, new bronze that we're using in our machine, and this one is uh, basically surplus now, so we're ready to let it go. A machine like this is kind of special to me because I spent so much time on it. When I first started the business, I did everything. Um, so I ran the equipment, I maintained it, uh, did all the work to it. Um, so I feel, I feel like it's uh, almost like one of my children. Um, I know every, literally every single bolt and screw on this machine. I've turned on it, I've wrenched on it, I've done maintenance. Uh, there's so many different things that I've done with this machine. Um, spent hours and hours and hours in it, putting in tile um, anywhere close to home, far away. Um, just lots and lots of good memories with it. We did quite a few modifications to it after we bought it. Uh, we enclosed up some of the hood. To, I, I, there was getting a lot of noise into the cab and I was a little bit concerned about my hearing. So we, uh, we put some insulation on it. We enclosed the side of the engine compartment to try and keep some of that noise from coming out this side. Uh, put some nicer ladders on it for accessibility. Really, we did a lot of work to the electronics side and the uh, hydraulic side. I learned a ton about hydraulics and automation and machine control on this machine. Uh, changed it all over to GPS control. It was one of the very, very first things we did was we took all the laser equipment off, changed it over to GPS control and um, made a big difference. The uh, machine was a lot more productive for us using the GPS technology. Uh, saved us from moving lasers and moving to laser tower stands and things like that. And uh, yeah, made a lot of, lot of uh, creature comfort improvements in the machine, a new air seat, a whole bunch of different things like that. I always dreamed about putting a brand new cab on it and uh, we never did get around to that, but um, we did a lot of other um, improvements uh, for operator comfort. This cab, I feel like I could find every switch and lever um, if I was blindfolded. I know exactly where everything is. Uh, it just, it still feels so natural to be sitting here and having one hand on the plow controls and one hand on the track controls and just cruising down the field at two miles an hour putting in pipe. Let's start it up because it sounds so good. Oh, it just sounds so good. It's got a 3406 CAT engine, um, just extremely reliable. We've never had to touch anything on that engine. When I got this machine, it had 13,000 hours on the engine, and we've put about another six or 7,000 on since then. And uh, it's just, we've, it's been so bulletproof, we've never had to touch it. Um, we've done some work to hydraulics. I had one catastrophic failure on a final drive. And other than that, um, just regular maintenance. Um, we have redone hydraulics and pumps, uh, mode, drive motors, that kind of stuff, just based on periodic routine maintenance. But uh, other than that, this machine's just been so incredibly reliable and it's, it's hard for me to see it go. You can see some of the other improvements we did to it. We put some nice catwalks on for accessing the fuel tanks. Um, Garnet's dad actually helped me put this uh, extra fuel tank on because uh, I wanted to be able to um, not have to stop for fuel just throughout the, I wanted to be able to plow a whole day and not have to stop for fuel. Um, so that was a big improvement as well that made us more efficient. We did have one catastrophic final drive uh, failure. Um, I think it was this side here. One of the gears broke, a piece broke off and it went through and it just basically disintegrated into a million pieces. Um, that's pretty much the only uh, major, major failure we had. Uh, it took us down for about three days. Uh, we had great support from the dealer in, uh, uh, down in southern Minnesota. Uh, they basically put a final drive on their pickup and we, we both started driving, met in Fargo, picked it up, came back and put it on and we were up and running in, in short order. So 
Machine's been really good. Little funny anecdote here. Um, when you're working in remote areas, um, nature calls. You got to do something, right? So uh, one of my memories here would be uh, kneeling down under in this area here, right in front of the right in front of the shank. You get this nice warm breeze coming off the engine, and it's just a great place to take a dump. Right in there. Another really neat place to know on these 3406 mechanical engines, right above the injector pump there, there's some lines that come off and a fantastic place to put your foil wrap burrito. Uh, you stick it on there frozen at eight in the morning and by noon, it is just perfect. Lots of memories crawling under here to hook up the cable. Sometimes we have to pull, it all depends on conditions, but depending on what's going on, we're pulling and I've crawled under this machine many, many times. Hook up the cable. Very early in the days, I used to always have a five gallon pail in here. And then um, every once in a while, one of my kids would come along and they'd sit on the pail and we'd go up and down the field. Adam did the most, um, but pretty much each one of my kids has ridden on the five gallon pail in the wolf plow. Another little funny anecdote. Uh, one time I went out to the field to get some drone shots. So I, I launched a drone off of the uh, roof of the cab and uh, took some drone video. I had one of the other guys operating the machine and I came back, uh, man, it must've been a couple years later. And uh, one of the guys had printed a decal of a helipad. And I think if we go up there, you'll probably still see the helipad decal on top of the roof. A few little different innovations that we've made over the years, uh, some of our own ideas. I guess a lot of it's my own ideas just in wanting to make things more efficient and quicker and easier in the field. Um, we devised our own system for changing uh, breaker plates. It used to be the way it came from the factory. You always had to take the bolts out. And by then, by the time it's ready to take out, you have to punch them out and they're rusted in. So we made this system where we have this plate that always stays on the shank. And we've got these keyhole tabs here. So when we want to put a wider breaker plate, we just drop it on top. It has, the breaker plate has guides and notches that fit the front to keep it from sliding up. And these keyhole pins just drop in. So that's an innovation that I'm kind of proud of. It saves us a lot of time in the field and a lot of, of frustration and, and, uh, and effort to try and change breaker plates. So that was, a, that was kind of a cool one. The other one was using these pintle hitches for hooking on the boots. Um, again, used to always be that we had to thread a bolt in and out, and then invariably it always got full of dirt in the field as a real pain. So we switched over to this uh, this pintle hitch style, and uh, that also was a huge time saver for us. This machine is just full of innovations and different little things, little things that we've done just to make it easier, better, simpler, faster, um, less frustration in the field. That's my Wolf 400. Um, lots of good memories wrapped up in that machine. Uh, I've I haven't tallied up how many feet we put in with it, but it's a lot. And uh, Precision Line Solutions just wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for this machine right here. And uh, a little sad to see it go, but we need to keep looking forward, uh, look to the future. New technology, um, always, we always got to keep changing and moving and improving and getting better. So, off she goes. <laughs>